Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. For those of you who aren't familiar with my channel, I post videos every Wednesday. And today's topic will be cleaning and maintaining your sewing machine. It's not perhaps the most exciting or thrilling, it's certainly not as fun as sewing, but it is definitely an important part of sewing and quilting. The quilt behind me is a coin quilt that I've been working on and I just finished it up this morning. It has the uh, borders on and my little eighth inch uh, stay stitch all around the edge and that will be ready to take to the quilters. In fact this week I'm going to be taking four quilts to the quilter and so when those are all done and the bindings put it on I'll show you those but that is going to be a while later. So and I'll step aside so you can see this quilt. This, this quilt turned out to be 77 by 82 and a half inches, so it's really a rather large quilt. But I like to make big quilts, as I've told you before. So let's get started with learning how to clean and maintain our sewing machines. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to recommend before you get started cleaning your sewing machine. Number one, you should take a close look at your sewing machine manual. It will tell you exactly how to clean and where to oil your machine. This is uh, my Bernina and it just has one simple page and so it's not like you're going to be reading page after page, just one simple page so be sure to read that before you get started because some people want to oil their machine in lots of places but my Bernina only wants you to um, oil in one place. So you don't want to be oiling places that don't need to be oiled. You don't want excess oil all over your machine because then it's likely to get onto your projects. So be sure you're taking a close look at your sewing, ma at your, yes, at your sewing machine manual. And then before you get started you want to turn it off and unplug it from the wall. Now on my machine I have a external light that goes on it and I have put that on and left that on. So you may think my machine's on, but it isn't. Now I do have my machine professionally cleaned and maintained at least once a year. Sometimes I do it twice a year simply because I sew a lot. And then I always put a sticky label on the back of my machine so that I know when I had it serviced last. There are a few things you're going to need before you start cleaning your sewing machine, so let's go over some of the supplies you're going to need. Number one, I have a paper towel here, and that's just to put the lint and uh, dirty Q-tips on that I use when I'm cleaning. And then um, my sewing machine comes with three tools that help. A little screwdriver, a little tool I'll show you how to use later, and a brush. And you don't have to use the brush, you can use a Q-tip or the little pipe cleaner tool I'm going to show you how to make in just a minute. This will be a great time to replace your needles, so you might have your needles, a, a new sewing machine needle ready. I have my Sharps, used Sharps dispenser, or storage little container here, and I put all my discarded pins rotary blades and sewing machine needles there just for safety. You'll need a little bowl just to hold any screws or things that you take off of your machine. Um, here's a little kit that I purchased from Fat Quarter Shop. It has a little soft cleaning cloth and it has a couple little brushes in them in it. So there's that and you will need some sewing machine oil. Now it's important that you use sewing machine oil. You never want to use any other type of oil. Now my machine came with Bernina oil and then I purchased this at a quilt shop and it is sewing machine oil and I really like this because it's like a syringe and it has just a small uh, applicator tip. Okay so the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to take a soft cleaning cloth you can take I forgot to show you this or your little microfiber cloth and I'm just going to wipe everything down you do not want to use any type of harsh chemicals on your sewing machine this is just a clean microfiber cloth 
and you're just going to want to dust it all, get all the dust off. Then after you've dusted it, I'm just going to take this base off. I'm going to take my walking foot off. take my sewing machine needle out. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to open up my bobbin case door. I'm going to take out my bobbin, my bobbin case. I'm going to remove my thread and I have a little bowl just to put those small little things in. And on the Berninas, you just have to push right there, right down there, and you can take off the little plate there. Now, I like to use this little tool, and all this is is a pipe cleaner, a three-inch piece of pipe cleaner. Let me show you how you do that. You just take your three-inch piece of pipe cleaner, twist it up like so, and then insert it into a coffee stir and you have a neat little cleaning tool. Now this is perhaps my favorite cleaning tool. You can use the brushes, but what I like to do is I like to just start cleaning. And my machine's really pretty clean. I keep it pretty clean, but it is important. You just want to get into all those little nooks and crannies. You want to be careful not to shove or pack anything down in there. But you do want to get, oh, there's some more dust as I missed earlier. You want to clean under your feed dogs. You want to clean your feed dogs good. Clean in between there. And just get that as clean as you can. You can clean the little apparatus up here so that everything's getting the lint and dust off. And I really do try to just clean that as good as I can. The next little tip I want to show you is I have my uh, Bernina foot pedal and I'm just going to prop my machine up with that just so that I can see inside. Okay. And I'm just going to continue to clean all of this area, trying to get off as much dirt and lint as I possibly can. I just like for my machine to be pretty clean. Alright, then we're going to take out, we're going to open up the hook door and take out the hook. Now you want to be sure that your hook is clean too. You can see some grease on my hook there. But you want to be sure that gets clean good. Okay. Then you just want to take a Q-tip and just clean that really good, getting off all the dirt and grime. Now I'm not a fan of using canned air. I feel like the canned air just packs stuff down in there more. So you just want to Get all that dirt and grime out of there. And sometimes you can just use little tweezers to help get all of the dirt and grime out of there. Alright, now my machine's looking pretty clean. And let me just show you on my machine. You just put one drop of oil right in there. Just one drop. That's all it needs. That's all it calls for. Now I'm going to put that hook back in. <coughs> oh, you scared me, Milo. Make sure that. 
hookahs in there. Just gonna hold it over the door. Got my bobbin case back in. Turn off that door. Close the door. I'm gonna put my little plate back on. This is a great time to be changing your needles, and I am going to put in um, a Schmatz Microtex Sharp Needle, and I use the crown. This is the 8020. I'm just going to slip that up in there. Before I put my walking foot back on, I'm just going to be sure it's clean. And again, you don't want to jam things in places. You just want to clean easily. We can see that's dirty. There's quite a bit of fuzz and stuff there. Okay. Once that's all clean, I'm just going to put that back on. There's one more area I want you I want to show you how to clean. Sometimes I've had thread get stuck in here and break off. I've tried to grab it just with tweezers and that doesn't always work. And I talked to him going machine repairman about this and he said this is fine to do and this is exactly what he does. But here's the little tool that I use and I will just take this case right off and just gently remove that. Put my screw in that little ball so it doesn't get lost and sometimes um, thread will get caught here or it will get caught up in there and you can just take your tweezers and remove that but again you don't want to be shoving the tweezers in tight places you don't want to be tugging too hard because you don't want to bend anything in here and that's the only thing I do here and as you can see there's no thread so I'm going to put my case back on and there you have it, just a nice, clean, well-oiled machine. And I did want to show you on my machine, I just put a little label there so that I'll know when the last day I serviced it is. And I just use a little sticky note with good adhesive that sticks there. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button, share with a friend, leave a comment, and as always, I love to get the comments, and I do try to respond to everyone. So until next time, have fun quilting.